G'day guys, it's Morgan here from Earth to Ocean Adventures. Today we're doing our review of the Sony FDR AX53 Handycam. Uh, we were using the Feiyu Tech MG Lite gimbal with the Sony A6000 uh, mirrorless camera for our video, but we've decided to step it up a little bit and also we found the gimbal was very bulky, hard to use. So anyway guys, this is going to be a real honest review of uh, what we've found being amateur videographers and the things we like about this camera and the features it has. First up guys, let's take a look and see what we've got inside the box with the camera that we just brought. Uh, so we open up inside, uh, we've got different instruction manuals for different languages. Uh, obviously they're trying to sell you a little bit more gear, so we've got some other accessories you can buy. Nice thing, $50 voucher from Sony, uh, shop online and we can redeem that voucher. So usual stuff there. In the box, deeper down, we start with our power cable here. So we've got our power cable, which then plugs into here. This one is for when you're recording, uh, sorry, when you're recharging from the mains power. Uh, use that one there. We've also got in here micro USB to USB. The camera is able to be charged from the laptop as opposed to from a power socket which is great if you don't have a lot of power sockets and you can only plug in your laptop. We also got a mini HDMI to HDMI cable so it means that we're able to record and then play straight back on the TV. I don't use this feature a lot but of course always nice to have the cables. On the other side here guys We've got our battery. Now one thing that we did find with the camera is that this battery for the initial charge uh, from the power socket takes 210 minutes. We weren't completely in love with this. It obviously is a long time to charge a battery um, and we get approximately an hour and a half recording time. So not the best but we can work with that. Obviously you can always buy spare batteries when needed. Finally guys, we've got in the pack here the camcorder itself. Uh, it's quite a nice looking little unit. Uh, first impressions, it feels pretty good. It's uh, quite a solid feeling uh, camera, which is always nice with the money that you spend. Uh, the only criticism i found so far of the construction is just the little cover here for the hot shoe tab. It's quite flimsy, fairly plasticky. Um, so not a huge problem if you're leaving it shut all the time. Maybe if you use that a lot, uh, it could eventually break. But generally, uh, we really like the way it feels. On this side here, we've got the multi-plug here and also the auxiliary 3.5mm jack there. Uh, this is a really great addition to the Sony a6000 that we're shooting with, which only had the hot shoe, which limited the number of microphones we could use. This having this on side now means that we've got a much larger range of different microphones we can use. The mini, uh, mini USB there, allows us now to charge via the computer and also transfer photos. On top here we have the zoom in and out, we have the still photo button and we have the selection between still and movie mode. So that's great. On this end we've got the start stop for record which is a nice easy access when you're holding the camera and you're wanting to start and stop recording, nice and easy to reach. Once we open up the panel here, the screen, on the inside here we've got our power button, our night shot, our playback, and also a mute button for the recorder. So if the recorder is talking, you can press this button and it will reduce the amount of volume coming from the voice. Behind this little flap here, we have the place for our SD card, memory card, to go in. It doesn't come with the camera guys, which is pretty normal. Uh, we've chosen to use the 128 gigabyte, uh, so we've got lots of storage for recording. Down on here, this is where we have the mini HDMI cable plug. Uh, so if you're looking at playing back on your TV, you can plug into here with the cable provided straight into your TV for playback. Closing the screen again and moving to the front of the camera. On the side here we have the manual button. The manual button is part of the reason we brought this camera. 
There's lots of different manual settings we can do, such as focus, zoom, white balance and all that. And that's all chosen with this manual button, which we'll talk a bit more about later, and adjust it using this ring on the outside of the camera here. On top as well, we also have the microphone. They claim a 5.1 surround sound mic on this camera. Other than that guys, fairly robust camera, feels good. The first thing I notice with the screen here, it is a touch screen that we have to use, and it's a really nice touch screen. These days I found with GoPro and stuff, the touch screen, you use them, and they're not very responsive. As with this one here, gentle touches, and you just go through everything and it reacts quickly. It's a really nice touch screen to use. Uh, the menu system did take me a little while to get my way around it and uh, learn where everything was. Uh, but once I'd done that, I really enjoyed the menu to um, get my way around. Okay guys, so I talked about the manual button on the side, which is part of the reason we we're really keen to get this camera. It gave us a little bit more scope for doing professional and more creative uh, videography. So when you want to use this, you hold down the button on the side, manual button, and it pops up with the menu here. Once you've got the menu, you turn this ring just on the side there, which is also the ring that you'll use later, and you can choose what you're going to uh, use that ring for. For us, we really want to do focus because we like depth of field. We press the manual button again, we now have it set for focus. What this means is that we can be zoomed in on a subject, uh, have a look at the subject and then slowly fade them out, blur them out and zoom in, focus the background. It gives a real nice cinematic effect and really adds to a level of professionalism in the videos that you're making. Hey guys, so after we've looked at the features on the outside of the camera, what does it do? What does Sony claim it does that we can't really see physically? One, it's a 4K camera. So it shoots in full 4K as well as HD. It's great down the track, we might look at doing 4K ourselves, but at the moment we just like the 1080 full HD. It's easy to edit, the file sizes aren't too big, and pretty much everybody can play HD still at the moment. The other things that uh, they like to talk about is the fact that it has a Carl Zeus lens, which obviously great quality lens, meant to improve quality considerably. It also has 20 times optical zoom, which is fantastic. It means uh, we'd like to do a lot of wildlife. It means we can zoom right in those birds, well, any wildlife at all really. Uh, we get to have a real good look at it. So we really enjoy that. Um, the last thing, and this really is the main reason we've chosen to go with this way with the camera, is the stabilization in the lens itself. So they call it a five axis stabilization system. Uh, you see from this video that when you turn it on, the lens starts, goes through its firing up process and then jumps into play. We'll show a couple of videos here. This one here is walking, recording with an iPhone 6, just a normal walk. And you can see there's a little bit of blurry and jumpiness here. Now if we switch over to the Sony and we do exactly the same walk, you notice although you can see the movement, it's very smooth, very smooth. In fact, it's a normal walk. I'm not even doing the old camera walk in this one uh, to try and make it as good as possible. The other test that you'll see that I'm doing just here is the camera shake test. I was really impressed with this one. As soon as I started it up, I thought I'd give it a go. And that is I basically grabbed the camera and just gave it a wobble. Okay, very dramatic, not quite what you do when you're recording. Obviously, you're going to try and record as still as possible, but I really wanted to see how this five axis system worked. On the iPhone, the shake is unbearable, it's horrible. It's, um, yeah, look at the video, you can see for yourself. On the Sony, I've done exactly the same, but the picture is basically completely still, which is just fantastic. It really is. Going from the MU, uh, sorry, the Feiyu Tech MG Lite gimbal that we were using before, once again with the A6000 mirrorless camera. It was bulky, it was hard to use, and even that almost didn't give us results as well as this. Um, this is really, the stabilizer, stabilization system in this, second to none, really impressed with it, and really happy with our decision to go with this at this point. Hey okay, guys, so we also talk about sound quality, or what the microphone, inbuilt microphone can do. Uh, we're in a small, kind of echoey room, uh, so that will be having an impact. 
Hey guys, so now we're outside uh, testing out the sound quality. This is approximately two meters and we're on the 5.1 surround sound. Talking a normal voice, we've got about 10 knots of wind, ambient sounds around and this is the sound quality we get. Another feature which we weren't even aware of when we brought the camera was night vision. When I think night vision, I automatically just assume that it would be a really bright light that shines on the front of the camera. However, it's not. It's actually an infrared camera. As you can see from these videos here, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, we really sort of started thinking maybe we could make a really creepy horror movie or something like that. Uh, also really handy, I guess, if you forget your torch and you want to see where you're going, use the camera. But uh, a really cool little feature from a compact unit like this. So the other thing, guys, for a camera that's packed full of features, one thing I really like is just how compact it is. It means that in our camera bag, we do a lot of travel photography, we're able to fit everything in. So in our bag here, I've got the drone, the GoPro, SLR, remote control, spare lenses, and our camcorder can fit nicely in there. And it's all compact. So it basically takes up the same room as an SLR lens would take up. That's fantastic for portability. Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed our review of the Sony FDR AX53 camera. I hope from this you've learned whether it's possibly the kind of camera that you need or not. If you have enjoyed the video guys, don't give up, forget to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, check out some of our other movies from our adventures around Australia, and you'll see what sort of work that we do with this sort of camera. Also, we're going to be taking off for a month. We're going to go visit uh, Canada and we're going to field test this baby for the next month or so. At the end of that, we'll do another review and let us let you know what we think of it actually out there after getting a chance to have a play with it. Anyway, guys, thanks heaps for watching. Tune in next time. Have fun.